Hi and welcome back to Life with Dr Amanda. I'm Dr Amanda and it's time for another Medicine Monday where the aim is to educate, empower and equip you with the knowledge that you need to live your healthiest life. So today we're going to be talking about my journey into medicine. So hi guys, and today's video is a little bit different to what we're used to for Medicine Mondays. Um, and it's because I'm currently in the process of filming a whole new Fisher Crusade season of Medicine Mondays and this time I want to have a lot more feedback from you from things that you want to see, maybe some shorter videos, um, some different topics. So let me know in the description box if you don't already and um, please follow me over my Instagram, it's called Life with Dr Amanda as well and on there you can DM me with any suggestions of videos that you really want to see. But whilst I am filming that, um, for the next couple of weeks we're going to be doing something a little bit different on this channel and it's just going to be a little bit of sit down videos with me um, and today I want to talk to you about my journey into medical, medicine. So this week I'm actually sitting down with a secondary school for their careers week and I'm going to be talking about my career and um, my journey into medicine, how I became a doctor and so I thought um, it's a story that I know can inspire some people um, and also I didn't get into medicine in the most straightforward kind of way and so I just wanted to share that with you. I know there are a lot of budding medics that are out there and um, some of you are watching these vid my videos, subscribe to me on here and on YouTube and so I thought I'd tell my story so you can see another perspective of how to get into medicine, how to you know become what you want to become. So. So I guess we should start from the beginning. Um, I think I first started talking about being a doctor and realised I wanted to be a doctor. I don't even remember, it's just so, so young. I feel like maybe the age of five, six, I started telling my family that I wanted to be a doctor. And I remember um, I wasn't just, I want to be a doctor, I was like very specific. I wanted to be a paediatrician. Um, and I don't know why I wanted to at the time. I think it's just because I saw doctors, you know, you see them on TV, something about it drew me to it and I used to talk about it a lot and I remember my aunt always asked me, so do you still want to be a paediatrician Amanda? I'm like, yep, yeah, I want to be a doctor <laughs> and um, it's, it's one of those things that can just be like a childhood, you know, when you ask a kid what they want to be and they say I want to be an astronaut, I want to be this and that and sometimes it can just seem like childhood dreams but what my parents did is that they really ran with it, they're like, okay, Amanda says she wants to be a doctor. I guess we're going to help her to become that and I know that if I had changed my mind over you know as I grew up they would have been fine with that and flexible but because I kept saying I wanted to be a doctor they kept you know pushing me towards that and supporting me in that um, and they kept reminding me <laughs> that Amanda you said Do you want to be a doctor and so I think that support from my parents really led me to actually becoming a doctor and actually making those dreams come true rather, rather than just being uh, you know something you say as a child and then people just dismiss it as time goes on. Now um, I wouldn't say that I am, and I've said this before, that I'm not really the most, um, I don't, I don't want to put myself down, but I'm not very you know book smart, it doesn't come very easy to me um, you know acquiring knowledge, so in school I had good grades but I had to work very very hard for it. I wasn't the kind of person that could like not revise or just do an essay in an hour and you know get it done. I really had to put a lot of work into it. And what I found is that as time went on, um, I got better and better because I got more used to studying and acquiring knowledge like that. But it wasn't second nature to me, if that makes sense. Um, and even though my family were really, really supportive and they you know did everything they could to try and you know get me to the goals that I had, there were a lot of people in my life that weren't supportive like that. Um, when I say, I think when I was younger, um, obviously I wasn't as put together or eloquent as I am now. And I remember even people at church, they used to call me um, Hillary from Friends, um, not from Friends, from the Fresh Prince. Contains Mrs. Banks' sonogram. It's going to tell us whether or not the baby's a boy or a girl. How can you tell if it's a boy or a girl? Oh, Ashley, you are so naive. If it's a boy, it's blue. <laughs> And I remember it used to really offend me when I was younger and people used to call me that because I felt like people didn't really believe in my abilities. Um, I used to feel quite embarrassed when I told people that I wanted to be a doctor to people outside of my family. Um, but 
I did, I did do well in school. I kept working really hard. And I remember once when I was in year nine, I, I've just finished the SATs. I don't know if they do the year nine SATs anymore, um, but I just finished my SATs and I've gotten really good scores. So I was moving from, I was moving into the top sets for my GCSEs. And we had parents' evenings, so it was like me and my parents and my form tutor, um, Mrs. Griffiths, I won't even forget her name. Um, and we were sat there and they were, they were, she was talking to my parents about how well I did in my sets and how I'm moving, up, I'm moving up in all of my sets. And then she said, oh, and just let you know, Amanda said that she um, wants to become a doctor. Um, I just think, you know, and I'm sat there, my parents there as well. I just want, I just think maybe she needs to have something a bit more realistic, maybe like a nursery nurse, something like that. You know, maybe we should be pushing them in that direction. And my goodness, did she say that to the wrong set of parents? My parents were they're quite obviously really upset by that. And they let her know how they felt about her assessment of my abilities. Um, and so going through school and the people outside of my family, I kind of had that, you know, that kind of background talk that maybe I wasn't going to be able to do this. Um, maybe I wasn't capable. And so I remember when I got to maybe 15, 16, 17, um, I did some work experience at a rehab hospital. And I was working with a lot of the physiotherapists. And then I started saying, you know what, I want to be a physiotherapist. Because, you know, um, I, I know a lot of physiotherapists now, and I know it's a very hard job and a very skilled job. But at the time, I was like, it's easy to get into physiotherapy, and people don't think I can be a doctor, so I'm just going to be a physiotherapist. That was what I was going to do. I was going to be a physiotherapist. And I remember saying this to my parents that, you know, I think I want to be a physio. And they were like, okay, then, fine, but let's still work, work towards medicine and then see what happens. And so, um, I just really started to doubt myself, I guess, because of what was going on everywhere. Um, but then I got into quite a good sixth form school. So I went to a comprehensive, um, like a public school for secondary school. And then they did have a sixth form there, but because I wanted to get into medicine, I wanted to, you know, um, I wanted someone that could push me more than the school that I was at was doing. I decided to um, apply to some sixth forms that were, more well known for helping their students to achieve like higher things. And I got into quite a good sixth form, sixth form college. And there they had a lot of students that had come from grammar schools, from private schools, that were all trying to get into quite um, high level jobs. So um, maybe whether it was law, vets, doctors, dentists, um, engineers, there were, there were um, ones that they were quite well known for getting you into like those higher courses. And so I was going there, I was doing all my subjects, and I feel like I was doing okay. Um, I went from being like a big fish in a small pond to being a small fish in a really big pond. And so um, sometimes it did make me doubt, because everyone around me was like, they're trying to get into medicine, or they're trying to get into dentistry. I was like, okay, I can do this as well. Um, and so this whole physio dream, I put it as my fifth choice on my UCAS form. And um, my top four choices were four med schools in the UK. I can't remember the ones now. I think maybe Southampton and... Nottingham, Manchester and Kiel, I think those are the four that I applied to. Um, and it came to time for referencing and I've been speaking about this with my tutors, with my biology teacher, my chemistry teacher and um, they were all supporting me in you know, going to medicine, no one told me they had any issues with it. But then it came to doing the reference and I'd give, you know, my form tutor who's also my chemistry teacher, um, she was doing my reference for me. And she was the one putting down all my predicted grades. And we'd had so many discussions about getting into med school and she'd never really told me anything to make me think she didn't think I could achieve it. But she did my, my references, uploaded it to UCAS, and then I had a look up at the reference she'd done and my predicted grades and they were not what I needed to get into med school. So she had put, I, you needed at the time A, A, B to get into med school as a minimum, but really more than that. And everyone that I've spoken to were, they were happy to give me those predicted grades. But she, when I looked on there, she had put me down for A, B, B. And you think maybe it's not a big difference, but to get into med school, you really need to have very specific, um, you need to have very specific grades. And so she put down A, B, B. I remember going to talk to her and be like, what was that about? Um, I remember her name as well, Heather. And I was like, Heather, why have you changed the grades to what, what we discussed? And then she said to me, Amanda, I think we just need to be a bit more realistic. I was like, what, what do you mean? And she's like, 
you know, we need to just be a little bit more realistic, don't we? I was like, well, I'm not going to get into med school with these grades, so maybe you should look at a different career. And I remember being so disheartened. But at the time, I'd already done my choices, and I was ready to send it. I'd done my personal statement, and so I still sent the um, I still sent the application through UCAS after these med schools and one physio school. And sorry, guys, one second. I'm filming at home, and my daughter's just woken up from a nap. So be right back. Okay, sorry about that. I'm back. So yeah, like I was saying, um, I sent my applications off to the four medical schools and to the physio course, and I didn't get a single interview. I got rejected from all four, and also physiotherapy as well, because um, physiotherapy is a career in its own right, where they want people who want to be physi physiotherapists, and my whole personal statement was all geared towards medicine, and so of course they didn't want somebody that was doing it as a second choice, really. And so I didn't get into any of them. And then I was just left with this decision on what do I do. I remember being so disheartened and really upset and I thought there's a couple of options. Either I go through clearing onto a different course, because if some of you don't know, um, there isn't, you know, you don't get medicine courses through clearing. Um, they, they don't advertise them like that. They have such a big cohort of people wanting to get in to med school that they have waiting lists and they don't need to use clearing. So that wasn't the only option. So it was either use clearing to do a different course um, or wait until the next year to apply. So I thought those were my two options, you know, apply once I've got my grades, then nobody can put any predicted grades down for me and mess anything up. But then my mum, she was working, um, one of her colleagues, her son was in a similar situation where he didn't get into med school, but he had done another course as an access course to get into medical school and so this was suggested to me. I remember saying to mom like, oh, it's not like, I'm not going to do it, that doesn't sound like a real course, I'm not doing it, not doing it. And I even spoke to um, like my tutor as well, who was like, I don't think that sounds like, you know, a thing, so just, you know, just look for something else, Amanda, basically. Um, but then my mom spoke to her colleague more and then um, she got her son, my, my mom's colleague's son to call me as well. And I spoke about it, and actually it was a real course. Um, it's, uh, it's a course called Clinical Sciences at Bradford University. And basically, there, was, there were two ways to get into med school through this course. Either you did a foundation course for a year, um, and then you would apply, if you got the grades that you needed, you would then apply to medical school in Leeds. And 20 people from that year, the foundation year, would go into the first year of medicine. And then the second option was that you could do the first year of the clinical sciences course, which actually mirrored the first year of the medicine course at the University of Leeds. And if you achieved the grades that you needed to get and then you were successful at the interview, 20 people would go through into the second year of medical school because they would have already done the first year but at Bradford Uni. And so I was like, okay, it sounds real. He did it. Um, I may as well give it a go. I don't. I didn't want to take a gap year, and at that point, I really felt quite, you know, um, strong that I wanted to be a doctor. So I wasn't going to try something else um, in clearing, and I really didn't want to do like a three-year degree then a postgraduate course. Although I knew that if I didn't get into medicine from this year at Bradford, then I would do the full three years of clinical sciences, and then um, figure out what what I wanted to do at the end, whether I wanted to try and become a doctor still and go into medicine. So um, I remember I applied for this because once you have been rejected from all of your choices, you can let you apply to another medical school or sorry, let you apply to another course. And so I applied to clinical sciences and within a week of applying there, I was called up for an interview where me and my parents went up and it was basically like a med school interview almost. And I did the interview and then I went back to my exams and I got the grades that I needed to to get into the course and I was in Bradford for a year. Now, this course was not what I expected. Um, I knew that it was going to be hard work, but it was much more intense. I think the, it was so intense because, well, I think it's because the stakes were so high. Everyone on that course wanted to do medicine. I forgot to say, I went into the first year, so I was doing the first year of medicine, but at Bradford University. And the requirements at the time, I think there were 90 people on the course, 20 people could have the opportunity to go through to medicine. And to have the opportunity, you had to score either 60 or 
um, overall and you needed to have passed every single one of your assessments and your exams. So you couldn't have an average of 70% but a failed one exam, you needed to just be good across the board basically. And then you'd go and do your personal statement, you'd have an interview and then they'd pick who they wanted to go over to medicine. And that year, it was intense because there was so much competition, everyone wanted to get into medicine on that course. Um, and just the stakes were so high, so every assessment, you know, you're so fearful of, you know, dropping the points or if you got 59%, you're like, oh, I need 60%, what's going on? And just forever trying to get your average up and just, you know, with that big goal in mind that there's this grade that you need to get and it was really intense. Um, but luckily I found some really good friends on the course and there were three, there were four of us actually. So there were um, two, two women that were in my year with me and then one that was in the year below and we actually um, lived together as well. And we used to revise together and work together and we weren't in competition with each other. We just wanted to support, support each other, we helped each other revise and that was when we used to do the all-nighters um, with the assignments and in the library and it was just such a, looking back on it, it was an enjoyable time actually. It was definitely an experience but it was very intense. And well, basically I got the grades during that year um, with very little sleep, a lot of stress, but I got the grades that I needed to, went through to the interview and I got into medical school. Um, instead of 20 of us going through, 22 of us from our year, from the first year got through, and two of those people had to repeat the first year again because there wasn't enough space in the second year, but luckily I went straight through into the second year. And um, to say that um, all the friends that I was with, so the three of us that were in the same year together, we all got the grades, um, and so we all went through to interview, but I was the only one to actually go through and be successful and get into University of Leeds. And the reason I mention this is because both of them now, they completed that clinical sciences group um, course and they are doing amazing at the moment. Um, one of them is a, um, one of them is a doctor. I think she's just finished her foundation years and she's doing awesome. And the other one is now a pediatric nurse. And so even though you may not, you know, achieve your goal and get into medicine or med school, there still is like really fulfilling lives out there. Um, that everyone's journey is different. And actually my friend who I live with, who is in the foundation year, she's actually on YouTube as well. Her name is Matia, Matia Cheek. Sheik, sorry, Matea Sheik, you can actually follow her as well. Um, she didn't get into med school either, and she's actually gone on to this amazing career where she's worked with like really amazing brands, and she's building her own business, and she's not a doctor, but she's doing really great. And so it's just to remember that, just because that's your goal, sometimes things can shift, sometimes God's got different plans for you. But for me, I did get into medical school, and I completed my next four years at the University of Leeds. And it's just so funny that so many people in my past, when I was younger, teenage years, were so doubtful of my ability to become a doctor. Um, but actually, I went into med school and I never failed a single exam. Um, I never failed a single assessment. Um, and I just went through, I never had to repeat a year. And it's like every year, especially as it got to the more clinical things where I was more patient facing, it just, it just started to come naturally to me. Whereas before, a lot of the book work and the exams I found very difficult. Once I got to the point where I could do OSCEs, which is like um, the exams where you have simulated patients, I was always really good at that. Um, because once I had the patient in front of me and I saw the context of the information, this is where I started to flourish um, and really you know, come into my own as a doctor. I then finished at the University of Leeds in 2015 and I went on to do two years of foundation training which is where you are in America and other parts of the, year, other parts of the world they call it intern but in England we call it foundation doctors and so I completed that in Yorkshire um, I did one year in Leeds and one year in an area called Wakefield in mid Yorkshire and then I moved to the West Midlands which is where I'm from um, because you know, me and my husband, we got married at the end of medical school and we were getting to the point where we were ready to start a family and we wanted to be closer to family again, um, close to my parents in particular. And so we moved back to the West Midlands in 2017 and that's when I started my GP training and that was a three year course. And um, people do ask how I can be a GP so young at 28, but I just took no breaks. The only break that I took was at, in my final year of GP training, I had my daughter, so I had some maternity leave. And so when I came back from maternity leave, I had a few months left and here we are now. Um, so I should have been 
um, qualified a little bit earlier actually than I did um, but because I had maternity leave it was pushed back a few months and um, yeah I, I'm 29 this year and I've finished my training I'm now a qualified GP and that's really my journey into it it wasn't um, an easy journey but I could tell this was definitely the space that I wanted to be in being a doctor has been one of the most fulfilling things I've ever done. And uh, being able to be part of people's life when they're being really vulnerable and you know help them in whatever way, whether it's just a listening ear, whether it's giving them some medication, educating them, it's just really enjoyable. And because I've loved the patient contact so much, I just wanted to give more people um, a chance to you know be as fulfilled as they can, live their healthiest lives. That's what this channel is all about. And my journey through this process to get to where I am now, I just want to share with you um, a lot of the things that I've learned along the way. So I hope you liked hearing that little journey that I've taken. Um, like I said, next week again, it's more of a sit down video and then we'll be moving back on to the next instalment of Medicine Mondays. If there is any topics that you'd like to see, just leave them down below. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. Please like this video if you liked it. And if you wanna know any more information about getting into medical school or what I enjoy about the job, the pros, the cons, if you want more videos about the actual career of being a doctor, then that's something I'm happy to do too. Just let me know um, down below. But I hope you're all doing well and take care.